Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. We greet you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thanking Him uh, for the revelation that He has given uh, in this day. And Lord, it's it's more than a revelation. It's, it's been a real uh, spiritual happening to the one that has eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit uh, has said uh, to the body of Christ. And uh, we're glad to be part of that body and uh, members, as the Bible said, members in particular. So it's a, it's a great time. And uh, as always, we want to uh, look today into the, to the Bible and uh, we want to look into the message of uh, Brother William Brown. He was to come this day to fulfill Malachi 4, uh, St. Luke 17, 30, and many other scriptures. And his mission was to restore, restore the Word, which had been lost down through the ages. So uh, he said he had uh, completed his Commission, his mission uh, uh, to the to the earth, and I believe that to be so. And so, now we're looking at the complete revelation of Jesus of Jesus Christ, given just like He had always given it through one of His servants. You know, the Bible was written by uh, what did it say, uh, forty different authors, and so on. But every one of them according to what the Bible said, were moved uh, by the Holy Spirit. And so it was God, but it was uh, God in the man that was bringing forth in it. God don't change his way, so it's the same way down here. And uh, <clears throat> so we think it's a great day, and we're glad that we can be uh, here to proclaim it. Somebody's got to proclaim it. I mean, you think... Uh, uh, the denominations are going to proclaim it. No, they're looking for uh, everything out in the future, and they're trying to get more members and trying to build bigger buildings and uh, say, "Come, we got this going on, we got that going on." But anyway, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, it's good that we can come together now, and we thank you that we have this time, Lord, and we pray that you will come be with us. You said wherever two or three would gather together in my name, I would be there in the midst, Lord. And we believe that you're here. We believe that you're here and you've always been here, Lord. You was here in Moses' day. You was even in the Garden of Eden. You said you come down and walk with them in the cool of the evening. Lord, so <clears throat> if we can just find out how that you are here, we can identify and recognize you. So, Lord, we pray this morning that as we would look into the scriptures and to the message uh, that your servant brought, Lord, we pray that, that the, the Holy Spirit, the one that's brought all these things to pass, Lord, that you would come on the scene once again and you would enlighten us, Lord, because we know that as the light comes, it manifests and reveals the word. So Lord, we pray that you'll do it today and we'll give you praise, honor, and glory in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless. Now, uh, we're going to take a little subject this morning and it's going to be on the last trumpet, the last seal, last church age, last messenger, and even last messenger. And uh, so we want to call this this morning the last trumpet seal church age. And we could have called it the last, but the people wouldn't know what the last were. So this is the last because everything that has a beginning has to come down to a place um, that it winds up. So we had church ages and they had to come to a place where they would wind up. So <clears throat> that's what, kind of where we are uh, today. So uh, let's go ahead and read our scripture this morning. And we're going to be looking into uh, 1 Thessalonians 
the fourth chapter, and we're going to read verses 13 through 18, and then we want to uh, go to Revelations chapter 5 and verse 1 down to verse 7. And so uh, it's good that we can still read the Word because God is the Word. And uh, now, even in this day, the Word that has been written has been manifested. For the last couple of, of messages we had, we had taken about John was supposed to, to write what he seen there in the book of Revelation, and that was his, that was his uh, mission to write it down, and he did, and it came out in the book of Revelation. And then since that, we've been kind of looking at what actually John seen in his visions there for a period of about two years. So now we're kind of going back and seeing, well, what, what actually did, did John see during this time? So uh, let's just go ahead and read our scriptures, and then we'll, we'll get into uh, some things here this morning. So let's look to 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, 13th verse. But I would not have you to be ignorant, and that's it's simply not knowing. I don't want you to not know these things, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Well, who's the one that has no hope? The ones outside of Jesus Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, well, we believe that. Even so, also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So we know Jesus said, I and my Father are one. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Now Paul, he said, I want you to know one thing. The, the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. This is not what I'm thinking. I'm getting this from God Almighty Himself, and He told me to write these things. So by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend <clears throat> from heaven with a shout. Now remember, Paul had met the Lord himself over on the road to Damascus as he, when, back when he was, he was Saul, he was an unbeliever. Matter of fact, he was a bad unbeliever. He was going everywhere he could to bring the believers in Jesus back. And he had papers that he could go do this. So he knows exactly who, and, it, and he saw that light come down, he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Well, he wasn't persecuting the body of Jesus, the, the, the natural body. He was persecuting the church body. That's the one he was persecuting. But that light... Uh, identified itself. Brother Brown said that pillar of fire, that light identified itself as Jesus the Lord. <clears throat> and he said, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds. And these clouds here are not some kind of a puffy rain cloud or something. The, this cloud here is the same cloud that was in the wilderness with the, the children of Israel. It was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night which let them know that God was on the scene. To meet the Lord, there's that Lord again, in the air... And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. And we're still comforting one another with these words. Because here, 
Paul is in the first church age. He's writing these things. And nobody knew when the coming of the Lord was going to be. Jesus, when he was here, he didn't know it. The angels didn't know it. No one knew but God himself. And so he says, comfort one another with these words. But it was an event that was going to take place. Now, in Revelations chapter 5, and verse 1 down to 7, And I saw in the right hand of him, now remember, the right hand is not a natural right hand, it is the, it's, the, it's a symbol of power, all power, and authority. Of him that sat on the throne, a book, written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel, remember we said this angel here is the same one, mighty angel in Revelations 10, proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof. And there was no man in heaven nor in earth nor under the earth was able to look upon the book, <clears throat> neither to open the book, neither to look thereon. So we, we've talked about, Brother Ram said, everybody was there. And he said, all the prophets, all the sages, everybody was there, and there was nobody could do it. But there was one that could do it. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book, and, and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now remember, John is seeing all this in his vision there. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So who's going to open this book and loose it? The, the lion the line of the tribe of David, the root of David, which is Jesus Christ. And beheld in the low of the midst of the throne of the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Remember, there were seven spirits of God come through the church ages, and it was all, there was, some, there was one poured out on each and every messenger through those ages, and it was not like God has got seven spirits, it was God working in every one of those ages. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And look here. He seen the, the lamb back there. He was coming because he'd done his work through the church ages as, a, as an intercessor, as a mediator and so on. But now something's fixing to change. We're coming forth and when he comes and takes his book, he becomes a lion. And then we find him over in Revelations 10 as the lion is roaring and the book is open. So... And let's drop this in here uh, right now. God is supernatural. People try to, to uh, tie him down to all the, the natural things, but God is supernatural, and God is unusual, and he does things in unusual ways. He don't have to follow whatever you got wrote down or charted out or what anybody else had back in some time in the dark ages. He does by his spirit. And he knew what he was going to do before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> so now we're looking to the last, the last trumpet, last seal, last church age. And this is what we're going to be uh, talking about as we go on here. <clears throat> and I was thinking this morning, if you talk to people and we're talking about spiritual things, and you're talking about spiritual things and they're hearing you as natural things, well, it would be just like if I'm here and I'm speaking English 
and somebody has come here that is from France and he knows not a word of English and I'm speaking to him in English and he's hearing that and he don't even comprehend what I'm saying because we are speaking two different languages. And that's the way it is when you're talking about spiritual things and somebody's hearing you and they're running it through their natural mind, converting it to all natural things. And so, and you wonder why. My goodness. Well, Jesus talked about spiritual things all the time. The Bible wrote about spiritual things all the time. And he didn't say, now this is spiritual and this is natural. He just, he just went on. He never said anything. He just kept on talking, moving along. And then the, the real genuine ones, even if they didn't understand it, they said, glory to God, you know, I believe what he said. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's the way it is today. If you've got... The Holy Spirit, the revealer on the inside, look here. If you had everything perfectly figured out, you wouldn't need any faith. But since you don't and never will, you have to have faith. And we know now faith is a revelation that God gives directly to you. All right, so... We're speaking <clears throat> this morning, this is some very deep spiritual things, and you better put your spiritual thinking cap on, because if you try to convert this all to a natural thing, you're not going to understand. Okay, I'm going to, to, the, to the message, the breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals there in Jeffersonville. Now, this is before he started to actually preach the seven seals, so it's right in that little period in the between time. And he makes this statement. And here he is as a mediator on the altar. Just a little longer. Now, we're in Revelations 5 now. Just a little longer. There's no more has to suffer like you. But now he comes from here at this last seal. Now, where, where, where is he at? He comes from here at this last seal. Well, the last seal is the seventh seal. He's no more mediator. He's king now. Because why? He become the lion. He has taken the book. And what does he do? If, if he's a king, he has to have subjects. And his subject is them that he has redeemed. And they cannot come before him until he takes the rights of redemption. And now, remember this is all in vision form that he's talking about as he's reading here in Revelations 5. And now he walks forth from a mediator where death put us in the grave. He comes forth with the rites. And even those who are alive and remain till his coming shall not Hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound at that last trumpet. Now, where's he, where's he getting this from? He's getting this from where we just read in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. He's quoting part of that, that chapter there. And that's why I read that, so you would know exactly what he's talking about and where he's getting this from. So he's tying this all together. Revelations 5 and 1 Thessalonians 4. Because he's talking about Revelations 5 and then he starts to quote out of 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And even those who are alive and remain till his coming shall not hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound at that last trump. When? The last seal is broke. 
Well, look here. If the last seal is broke, not broken, we're just, we're just beating our gums for nothing. Because the last seal, he has to come to open the rest of the seal. He is the one that opens them. You would think that just that statement would be so simple that everybody would catch it, but no, everybody does not. When the last seal is broke, when the seventh angel's given his message, well, hello, that is 50-something years ago, and the people had not caught up. I mean, you wonder, they, they read. And they quote, and they listen, and everything else. And everything that he's talking about that has been accomplished, they got it off in the future somewhere. It's just as well, you just you know what it is. They're spiritually blind. And when the the seventh angel's given his message, the last trump shall sound. Did you get that? When the seventh angel is given his message, the last trump will sound. And the people say, well, <laughs> yeah, you keep on looking, but it's already happened. And the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet him in the air. Okay. They took the picture of it, the picture that was in the Life magazine of that cloud. Brother Brown said, that was Jesus, and they took our picture. <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking about. You have to have a spiritual understanding or you will never get it. And the only one that can give you that understanding is the Spirit Him. Self. He claims. He comes forth now to claim his possession. Watch. Look at this. My broke the seals, reveal the mysteries, reveal them where? To the last church age, that's the only one that's living. The rest of them is sleeping. Okay. All the way down from the church, first church age, all the way down there, they, they, was, they served their time and they've been put away. They sleep. So he's revealing this to the last church age. Now, Let's just go a little bit further here because now he's talking about the, the last seal, the last trump, the last church age, the last message. And, and this is all coming together at the same time. But no, everybody wants to. Well, well you know, we're looking. Well, okay. But I'm not looking. Because I, I have eyes to see what he has done. And I'm here telling about what he has done. Now let's go on with the breach. He said, if you come to the first watch, second watch, third watch, on down to the seventh watch. In the seventh watch, there went out a command or call, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. You know, that's in Matthew 25. And when he did, the sleeping virgins, the nominal churches said, Oh, you know, I believe I'd like to have that. I'd like to have that Holy Ghost. Have you noticed the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians? Did you hear my message in Phoenix to them? To them men who stand up there and the voice in their saying, Well, what's the matter with this author saying, Holy Father, so and so, when the Bible said, Call no man father, see? They're sleeping with them. That's the reason. When, but when they come forth and said, Yeah, we believe. Okay? Brother Ram was talking about his ministry. That was what was going on the time he was here. They was all said, Well, we need, we need the Holy Ghost and we need to speak in tongues. Oh, Lord. So you know what? 
the Holy Spirit was bound for 2,000 years by a denomination. Well, how did the denomination bind it? Because it was under creeds and dogmas of man. Where he couldn't because you, he told Jesus, told that bunch in his day, you've made the word of God of non effect by your traditions. And they've done the same thing through the church age. You know, Eve believed Satan's lie. And what happened when she believed Satan's lie? She fell. And then Adam fell. And then we all fell. But we're coming back. He didn't, wasn't going to let it stay that way. He was going to restore his word. And he has restored his word. And we believe that. And we believe the word. And we don't want any denominational binding mixed with this word. We're not going to allow it. In the breach they died Jesus said he that believeth on me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day and that you know back in John 6 he said that in just like throwing a, a bomb in the middle of it. Whoa, whoa, what, what, what are you talking about? He never said one word to explain it. No matter if he falls asleep in the first watch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh, wherever he falls asleep, what will happen? Okay, he's asking the question. What will happen? And thank God he's going to tell us. The trumpet of God shall sound that last trump. Last trump. Last trump. Last seal. Last church age. We'll blast forth the same time. Now that's very important. The last trump will blast forth at the same time that the last angel's given his message. Same time. And the last seal is opened. Trumpet, message, seal. Same time. Oh, well, I, well I, you know, I don't even know whether the seventh seal is open or not. Well, why don't you know? Because you've been listening to the wrong voice. You have not moved along. You're back there over 50 years ago. <clears throat> Same time that the last angel's given his message and the last seal is opened up. The, that last trumpet will sound and the Redeemer, who is a Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the Redeemer comes forth to take his redeemed possessions, his church, the blood washed. Now, same time it's happened because we know when the last angel was given his message he said there was a first pool there was a second pool but the third pool was the opening of the word the mysteries revealed oh lord so he comes forth to get his redeemed possessions, his blood washed. He's talking here right back to Revelation chapter 5 again. And then where, what we read a while ago, he tied that right in with 1 Thessalonians 4 chapter. I wouldn't have you to be ignorant. 
I wouldn't have you not knowing these things. Because I've got a seventh angel. I've got a prophet that's come on the scene that's going to tell you these things. He's going to let you know what the vision John was seeing was all about. So, same time. I don't care. I don't care how many people go back and try to dissect this. It's going to say the same thing. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But, you know, intellectual mind can see a lot of things that we can't see because it of that intellectual. You know, it's, a, it's amazing that, that, that God was going to start a church and was going to run down through, through all the ages and so on, and he'd pick Peter as the head of the church a fisherman that couldn't even read or write. Could you imagine somebody today picking a, a man like that? Or could you imagine somebody picking a, a, a little guy out of almost out of a backwood somewhere that had a seventh grade education? Would you have picked him? Uh, probably not. So he's not talking. He didn't find some intellectual giant. He could have had those by the gross. He had to find somebody that would believe that he could get in his hand and wouldn't rely on such stuff as that. Just rely on one thing, what? God Almighty and what He said. Okay, now let's go over here to the same time. All these things are happening at the same time. Now let's go to the first seal. Notice, he'll conquer the whole religious world. Okay? If you're in the religious world, boom, you're conquered. That's just, that's just it. Because he said he would conquer the whole religious world. Who? Who's who going to do that? Satan. The devil. He'll conquer, he'll make a covenant with Daniel's people. Here it is, both in the Gentile and in Daniel's people, the Jews, to the last week. And here we are, even draw that on boards and you see it perfectly, that's where it is. Thank God, there he is. That organizational system is of the devil. Now, if the organizational system is of the devil, why would I want their teachings and beliefs? Well, I, I wouldn't want them because he done told us that's of the devil. And what does the devil do? He lies. He takes away and adds to it, makes the whole thing of non-effect. That's what happened during the Dark Ages. And that's no punches pulled on that either. See, exactly. It's the root of the devil. Well, if that's the root of the devil, they're organ... Then, well, they say, well, you know, it's, just an, it's an organization of what? Of people that believe something. That's why they're in that organization. That's why the Baptists are Baptists and the Methodists are Methodists and the Pentecostals are Pentecostals. Because they're, they're in that organization and they believe what they are being taught. Well, he's told us to come out of her. Her who? Organizational religion. But no. Oh, they said... People come on that. Well, and you know, uh, I come out. Yeah, you come out and you brought the same old thing with you and you brought it over here in the message and teaching it in the message. Looking for Jesus to come. Looking for the clouds to peel back and everything else. Graves to pop open and people go floating up. Well, the people that believe that, they need to go ask these Baptists and Methodists and all the rest of them, what do you think about that? And they say, Amen. 
spiritual revelation. <clears throat> it's the root of the devil. And now, not the people, people in there. And he said, them are some God's people, many of them, but they got to come out. But you know what? When we get over here, till we get to that, the, these trumpets sounding, and the next time I come by, these trumpets sound. You remember when that last angel, the last angels, plural, that third angels come across, come out of her, my people. Well, whose message was that? He's talking about when that third angel, yeah, it was Luther, Wesley, and Brother Branham. The third angel come across, come out of her, Revelations 18 and 4. Whose message was that? That's what Brother Branham was screaming from day one, come out of that mess. Hmm. When that third angel comes across, come out of my people, when that angel flies at the same time, uh-oh, same time, that message drops here for that last trumpet, the last angel's message, the last seal opens, all happens at the same time. Yes, sir. Now, how can any one read these statements and not see it? There's got to be some reason. Because either, well, if they're in Laodicea, which they say they are, they are blind. And the only way you can get, get some eye, you need some eye salve, you need the Holy Ghost. So, I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's plain. But see, with that denominational, organizational pull on you, and with that, you're using your intellect because you don't have the Holy Spirit. What else could you come up with? But make excuses. Well, there ain't no excuses for this. He said it all happens at the same time. Now, let's go a little bit further. This is souls because now we're talking about all these last. The last seal. The last trumpet. The last church age, the last messenger, the last. And the people here, it's been 50 something years, and well, they don't they, Well, uh, you know. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're looking for him. And the people, they are so confused on the coming. Because there's, there's only three. There's only three coming. There's not a half a dozen. He don't just go whoosh, 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 whoosh. going up and down, up and down, up and down. No. He come, Brother Brown said, he come in three sons' name. Son of man. He redeemed us at the cross. That was a real man born of a woman that had real blood, and that blood was the very blood of God, and that life that was in that blood was God's own life that could come back on us. And it did on the day of Pentecost. Then, the day of Pentecost, whoosh, Son of God, Spirit, whoosh, all through the church ages. But he said, then, son of David, sitting on his father's, on the, the throne. But he said, in that little space in between the son of God and the son of David, he returns back again as son of man, prophet. And the people, they think, well, you know, uh, Jesus is going to drop out of the sky. 
carnal. That was not the promise. The promise was Malachi 4. Behold, I sent unto you Elijah the prophet. And I'm not looking for the Elijah of the Old Testament. We're looking for the spirit of Elijah, which is Jesus Christ. And then in St. Luke 17, 30, the day when the Son of Man is being revealed, declared, manifested, made known. And we got a prophet on the scene doing the same things that was done in Jesus' ministry. And they're scratching their head. Well, you know. Uh, mm. And then he come to redeem her. There's only three, three comings. He come to redeem her. He come to get her and comes back with her. And when they see that, oh yeah, he's coming back with her. Well, they think Jesus is going to come walking along. He comes back with her. He is the very Word of God manifested for the day. That's what the ministry of Malachi 4 was all about. Was to restore the Word. Revelations 19, a white horse. And I guess they're looking for a big white horse to come jumping out of the sky. That's a symbol. What's it a symbol of? It's a symbol of the Word of God. And who followed him on white horses? His people. But no, 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 that can't be spiritual and carnal and natural. Look here. They just don't mix. Okay, let's see. That didn't cost you anything. That was all free. Okay, let's go to the souls that are in prison now. Souls that are in prison now. Well, whose prison was they in? <clears throat> the Lamb had redeemed it. Okay, amen. The Lamb had redeemed it. Where did He redeem it at? at? We used to sing a song in the church. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Yeah, redeemed at the cross. But He could not come forth until every name was revealed and that was taking place under the sixth seal before the seventh broke. Then the spotless, then the Lamb came for what He had redeemed. He come to claim what He had redeemed. He's already got it right here in the book, Revelations chapter 5 again. Because He's taken the book of redemption. Everything that was going to be redeemed was in that book. Taking it from his hand, now he's coming to receive what he has redeemed. Now he's coming. Revelation chapter 5. Now he's coming. That's his work. He's done. He's come to receive it. Oh, what a time. Has proven it. Oh, my. He said, oh, what a time. He's coming. He's taking the book and he's, he's got it. He's coming there after his redeeming. He's got it. He said, oh, what a time. The seventh seal proved it. Well, the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. There was silence. 
in heaven because there wasn't a speck given what it was. Just deadly silence. What a time has proven it. The seventh seal proved it. Come back and took the book of redemption. He ties Revelation 8 and 1 right in with Revelation 5. Because Revelation 8 and 1 didn't say a thing. You go to Revelation 5 and you see what Revelation 8 and 1 was all about. No wonder he couldn't tell it. He put it over here in this symbol form, in this vision, and people read that and say, mm, well, no, no, he's a lamb here, and, and where's, where's the lion? And all these people crying, and what's going on? And what, now wait a minute. And they don't get it. So the seventh seal proved it. Come back and took the book of redemption. And I don't care. I don't care if my voice is one voice against 25 billion. It don't make a bit of difference. This is the truth. And as Brother Branham would say, this is not makeup. This is what God has done. Look here. We don't have to... Well, this is not prophecy. This is prophecy fulfilled. God interprets His Word by bringing it to pass. That is the way He does it. But no people they ain't going to believe that. Because why? They don't have anything to believe with. Look here. Look here. When this real, true, genuine Word strikes a genuine seat, boom! It comes to life. Because this is life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Okay, let's go a little bit further in this souls that are in prison now. And Jesus come to set the captive free. Is that what he said when he took the book? There in, I think, Luke is Luke chapter 4. Didn't he come to set the captive free? Well, what if the captive don't want to go free? They just sit there and say, well, you know, I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what that voice is saying. I don't know what that trumpet sound is. I, you know, it don't mean nothing to me. Okay. Stay in prison. That's all right. But look here. The ones that have an ear to hear what that trumpet sound was, they got out. <clears throat> Souls in prison. He said, the lamb took his book. When? At what time? The lamb took his book when? The seventh seal just ready for it to be open. Oh my, can you imagine that? Look here. Now he's got the book and he takes that book and as soon as he takes that book, boom! The seventh seal is open! But oh no, no. Too much, too much, too much. The Lamb took his book when? The seventh seal just ready for it to be opened. The sixth seal, remember he hid the seventh seal from us. Yeah, he did. Remember when he preached the seventh seal? He said, I, 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 I can't tell you. It has, it has, it been, has it been revealed to me? I, mean, I, need, I better stop right here. And he even went off and, and done a, a repeat of the last of the service to make sure he covered it up. Thought he might have said too much. He wouldn't do it. When the angel stood by day by night, day by day telling it, but then he wouldn't do it on that one. Said, there is silence in heaven 
No one knew it was the coming of the Lord. Silence in heaven, Revelations 8 and 1, no one knew because they weren't supposed to know. Nobody knew but God himself. No one knew it. Look here, something has happened since he preached the seventh seal. He's been allowed now to tell what it was. No one knew it was. When? When he took the book. It was the coming of the Lord. Oh, you say it can't be. And he even says, I hope it isn't. And that's what they're still saying. Oh, 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 oh. no, no, no. That wasn't it. Well, no, one day he's going to come. Yeah, okay, you keep on with that. Oh, you say, it can't be. I hope it isn't. He said, you say. And they're still saying the same thing today. All right, let's go just a little bit further with this. Because now, he's already let out. Because he was just telling us back over here in Revelation 5, he was just telling us all about the vision and everything and what was going on. And they didn't catch it because he's just talking about a vision over there that John had that John had seen. But now we go over here to uh, what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? There in 1963, actually in November, and souls in prison was in November. And he said, and who would dare to say that wasn't the inspired word of God? When he foretold it here and sent me out yonder to Arizona, Arizona and brought it right back. And even with science and everything else and proved it so. The book is already open. That's right. Just waiting for the seventh seal to be identified of the coming of Christ. Because he knew. Look here. They had, this was only just a few months after he had preached it. And here we're down here 50 something years and they ain't identified it yet. Because they won't let him come. He's got to come the way they got it charted and mapped out. Or he can't come. So say they. But look here. We got news. It's already happened and you did not know it. And you prove you did not know it by the things you say. So, just waiting for the seventh seal to be identified of the coming of Christ. And so, that's what he's been waiting for. Somebody to, somebody to identify what he was doing. But, did they do it? No. Nope. They've got it all here. Well, you know, tomorrow, next day, next week, next month, whenever. Oh, well, we, we, all we know, we know he's going to be here. Well, he was. Yes. He fulfilled his word. Well, why did he come? To fulfill his word. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even that others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming shall not prevent them. This is the word of the Lord. Paul spoke it and God has fulfilled it. But, so all of these things are happening at the same time. And, they, and, and we wouldn't even know the time if he didn't put in there every time. It happens when the seventh angel's given his message. Because if he hadn't said that, they'd say, well, you know, 
same, same time when? What same time? Well, the, the same time is from 1963 on. That's when the begin to sound third pull opening of the word. Now, let's see if we can get just a little more while, while we're uh, talking about this. Because now, remember, John saw the vision. And then he wrote the vision. And then what we've been talking about is what was happening that John wrote about in the vision, but he wrote it all in symbol form. And why did he write? Why did he just say, well, you know, this is what's going on? Because he wrote it that way to hide it from the wise and prudent and reveal it unto his own. That's exactly why. Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know how much plainer you can make it. John wrote it in symbol form. Brother Branham comes comes along and takes what John says and just breaks it down completely and tells us what happened. And they say, oh no, no way. So that's what we're talking about. And this is all what's going on, what we're talking about. It's all in Revelations 5 and now he brings in 1 Thessalonians 4 and all these scriptures that are pertaining to this time. Now, I hear, I've got in here the Feast of the Trumpets. And this is in 1964, there in uh, July. Now he said, the gathering of Israel is the trumpets. The trumpets is to gather Israel. Notice, the first trumpet sound, blood, fire, hail, everything scattered the ground. What was he doing? bringing Israel out of spiritual Egypt. Spiritual Egypt, not literal. See, back into his homeland. Bring them out of spiritual Egypt because the first time he brought them out of real Egypt. This time he's bringing them out of the same thing because they were in captivity and they were killing them. back into the homeland, back over there to where they are even yet today. Now let me say this right here, that every trumpet blowed, blowed under the sixth seal. We'll get to it in a few minutes. Where we caught the seal there, all the trumpets sounded under the sixth seal. But the seventh seal, there was silence. No one knew that it was a minute or hour that Christ would come as he revealed it to us. I'm part of that us. Yes, as he revealed that no one knew it was a minute or hour that Christ would come as he revealed it to us. And Brother Man putting himself in there. So he even drops his seventh seal in over here talking about the trumpets. And he's, I mean, just he's just dropping hint, hint, hint. And then he comes along and says, well, we're waiting for the coming of the Lord. Uh-oh. Well, I thought you said he'd come. He did. And he says, we're waiting on the, but look, who was he talking to? The elect wasn't waiting on the coming because they was the one that seen the coming. They was the one that was in the coming. It's these others that are waiting on it. The one that have not recognized. I guarantee you, and you ask them today, no, I'm still waiting on the coming. Because mm -hmm. my church, my pastor, my this, that, or the other says, well, well he'll be here one day. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Feast of the Trumpets. He said, now notice, 2,000, 200,000 demons turned loose upon the Jews when they burned them, they crucified them, they put bubbles in their veins, they killed them till they had no more gas to kill them with, and they shot them till they had no more bullets to shoot with, and they done everything they could do. They cremated their bodies and everything else and hung them on fences, children and all, innocent people, because they were Jews. They were done that way, but God said He'd give each one of them a robe undeserving as they was, but His grace to blind them so that He, so that we could see. And this is what everybody goes to. And then His next statement, He said, the seventh seal hasn't opened yet you know that's His coming. No, it didn't open back over here in the sixth seal where all this was going on with the Jews. They had to get past the sixth seal so that it could open the seventh seal. And people, they, they bring up that. Like somebody can't see through that. See what He's talking about. And they just take up that one line and say, oh yeah, the seventh seal hasn't opened yet. You know, and even there, he said, you know, that's his coming. But the wise, they know their God, and they're not fooled. No, absolutely. Now, let's get another statement to out the Feast of the Trumpets. And most people, they're scared of this message. Oh, Brother Brown, you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm not scared of it. I believe what he said. And I believe he had the revelation of what he was talking about. Pentecost feast finishes at the period of the seventh trump. Pentecost feast, church ages. At the seventh trump. For the next is the coming of the seventh seal. For the next is the mystery of the coming of Christ and also the trumpet is to sound for the Jews. Now, we just read a quote just the other day. He said, He's coming directly to the Jews because the church is finished. Look here. He takes the book. He's got what? But he has to make himself known to the Jews because he blinded them. And he does. And he did. The mystery of the coming of Christ and also the trumpet is a sound for the Jews. Their sixth seal is sound. And when it does, it makes known to them the revealed Son of God, one Half hour of space. What does that sound like? Sound like Revelations 8 and 1? Remember all the trumpets sound on this sixth seal. The sixth seal finishes the mystery under the sixth seal just before the seventh seal is opened. Seventh seal, the coming of Christ. Open, taking the book. Revelations 5. Now look, I want to say one more thing closely now. Don't miss this. How striking from the seventh angel's messenger of the seventh seal message in Revelations 10 was the seventh seal to the seven trumpets between those two times. And he's already told us that Revelations 10, 1, 2, 7 had been fulfilled. Between those two times, he said, Oh God, how can we say this to make the people see it? It's between that sixth trumpet and the sixth trumpet, the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, there is a prophet to appear before the Gentiles 
Oh, I wonder who that could be. Could that be Luke 17, 30? Could that be Malachi 4? Absolutely. That's the only one that's promised to come in this day. To call the people back to the original Pentecostal doctrine and the two witnesses of Revelations 11 to appear to the Jews to send them to Jesus while the church is being taken up and all of them prophets, amen, the word of the Lord cannot be broken. It won't be a denomination. Do you see it? It won't be a denomination because what is a denomination? It's their teachings. And they do not have the truth. Don't even know where you're close. Now, I want to look at this just a minute. He said, now, in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, there is, between, right there, there is a prophet to appear before the Gentiles to call the people back to the original Pentecostal doctrine, the word restored. And the two witnesses of Revelation 11 appear to the Jews. Now, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, two witnesses, two symbols. That's a symbol. And it goes on and it says two prophets. Well, symbol. But what has always been the two witnesses from the beginning to the end? What are the two witnesses? The two witnesses are the Word and the Spirit. In the beginning, God, and God said, Word and Spirit. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Word and Spirit. And here, we've got the two prophets. And he said this, Moses and Elijah. Word, Moses had the word. Elijah, it was the spirit of Elijah. Word and spirit. And who was this all representing? It was representing Christ. Word and spirit. But oh no. We want the book of Revelations to work out just the way it's talking about. Well, if, if Revelation 11 is always natural, why won't we just make all the rest of it natural? Where's the seven-headed beast and where's the, the woman and now all these other things? No, it could not be that way. But no, they're going to have it that way, so just, just let it be. I, don't, I can't help it. And these two witnesses of Revelation 11 appeared to the Jews to send in the Jesus, the Word and Spirit, which is Christ. While the church is being taken up, 1 Thessalonians 4, and all of them prophets, amen, the Word of the Lord can't be broken. It won't be a denomination. And if you've got any of their teachings, you can just forget it. And he says, do you see it? Amen. And at the same time, uh-oh, same time again. Brother Adam, he, he liked to put that in there. Because he knew when he said that, boom, he had it locked in. And at the same time, now, as soon as this church, the bride is drawn together, she is taken up. And the mystery of the seventh seal, or the seventh seal, the mystery of going. And the Jews is called by the mystery of the seventh trumpet, which is two prophets, Elijah and Moses, and they come back. And there is where the Pentecostals is all mixed up. And they're looking for something to happen. The church is done, gone, and that's to the Jews. And look at it. The Pentecostals. 
and the denominations and ever they're looking and there is where they're all mixed up well there's only one that can unmix you up and that is the holy spirit himself and if he don't come and give you an unmix you will remain mixed up because the church is done. Yeah, the church is gone. Look here. If we go back to the book of Revelation, the church is gone in Revelation 4. Come up hither. John, our type, our symbol. Come up hither. He was in the Spirit. John, the call was to come up hither. And he never left the Isle of Patmos. My. John was on the Spirit on the Lord's day for about two years. And he saw all these visions and he was writing. So the church is done gone. But oh no. No, um, I don't care what, what you say. I don't care what you've read. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. They're going to say, I don't believe that. Well, okay. That's okay. I cannot make you believe that. But I do believe that. And I believe what we have read is the truth. Now, let's look at this and we can finish up here. <clears throat> the first seal there in Jeffersonville. He said, now, the white horse rider the white horse rider of the seals, the first seal. And what was that rider? He was deception, coming out on a white horse, deception, deceiving. And look here, he just kept on deceiving, and he's still deceiving. The white horse rider has been in the land all the time. He will change from Antichrist he does that and becomes to a false prophet. Amen. See, he first started as Antichrist, the Spirit. Let me say this right here while this comes on my mind. Now, God is a Spirit. Is that what the Bible says? The devil is a created Spirit. God created the devil, the Spirit. He's a created, and God made him his enemy. And he gave him, he said, you can do everything, but there's one thing you can't do. You cannot create. There's only one creator, and I am your creator. So what does he do? Now, when God wants something, he just creates it. When he wants to have a, a virgin born son, he just goes, does it. He creates a sperm and egg, drops it in a virgin, and has it. But the devil, he can't do that. He has to work through flesh. And he did. And all he is, is a perverter of the word. Just go back and look at the beginning and see where he started. Yea, as God said. Uh huh. You'll surely not die, liar. Still a liar. So, two spirits. God, eternal God, almighty God. And over here, a created spirit that is the arch enemy. <clears throat> and so what does he do? He done it in the garden. Deception. And he becomes a false prophet. The Antichrist. The Spirit. Then he becomes a false prophet. Then later, when the devil is cast out, well, when is the devil cast out? When we go up, he is cast out. And he's no more the accuser of the brethren because he ain't got nothing to the accuse because Christ has taken the book. Of redemption. They are redeemed. In the story. He can accuse what all he wants to. He ain't got nothing to accuse. Mm -hmm. 
Then later, when the devil is cast out, he's incarnate then with the devil. Three stages first. It's a devil to begin with, a spirit of the devil. Then he becomes a false prophet, the teacher of his false doctrine. Well, my goodness, he's, he's, he's working overtime today, a teacher of this false doctrine. Where is he teaching? In every church you can get in, including the message churches. Because why? They got the same doctrine that come out of mama. Now, then he becomes a false prophet, teacher of the false doctrine. Next thing, he comes as the very devil incarnate. Wait a minute. The very devil himself incarnate. And the people wonder, well, well, what do you mean the devil's incarnate? <laughs> Just look on the street. And the people say, oh, yeah, there ain't no, there's no doubt. Them people are devil-possessed. Well, evidently, the devil, he can become incarnate in his people, but God cannot become incarnate in his people. So that makes the devil greater than God. Nonsense. God has been coming incarnate in his people ever since the day of Pentecost. By the way of the new birth. Hmm. And at the uh oh. And at the same time that this devil falls out of heaven and becomes, becomes incarnate in a man, the Holy Spirit goes up and comes down incarnate man. Yes, the Holy Spirit. He goes up and he comes down and incarnate in man. What man? This man, your man. The body. The body of Christ. He's flesh. We are flesh of His flesh. Bone of His bone. Life of His life. Spirit of His spirit. We are Him. But don't tell them that. Because they're still looking for Him. Look here. The bride goes up. And the devil's kicked out. He ain't got nothing to accuse. What's he going to accuse? Because he's already taken the book. And what do people do with a message like this? Well, they make fun of it. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day, man, you've got a funny revelation. And somebody said, well, you're talking about you've been raptured and you've had a body change and I've seen your picture and you look like an old man. Look here. They have never seen the real me. The picture, if I could show it to them, was the picture taken of me before the foundation of the world. But they'll never get to see that. So they made fun of him. I don't care. Let them make. They made fun of Jesus. They made fun of Brother Brown. They made fun of every believer all down to the time. Let them make all the fun. Let them have a good time and everything else. That don't bother me. They make fun of it and explain it all away. Oh yeah. They'll get up and they'll laugh and they'll go on and say, you, you believe them crazy people, they're a bunch of nuts. They ought to be put in jail and get rid of them. Uh-huh, yeah. And explain it, explain it all away because they can't use what we've used today. They've got to go somewhere else and explain it all away through their intellectual conception of the Word. When the very God Himself manifesting Himself and proving it. Yep. The very God Himself. 
was manifesting himself and proving it. He said, the seventh seal proved it. He'd come back and took the book. But not to them. It'd never be proven them. They, they have nothing that they can accept the proof with. But praise God. There, there are some people that can and do and will. And look here. We're here. We're here to be a witness to what God has done and what He's already done. And that is our that is our mission, that is our commission this day is Revelations 10, 8 through 11, prophesy again. And that's what we're doing. Praise God. Well, God is good. I mean, when you can see what He has done in this day. And He, he didn't have an organization. He didn't have nobody. He just had one little man. But God was in that man, and the people couldn't resist it. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, we're so glad that we can stand in this day and tell and recite what you have done, what your prophet has said. And Lord, he said that you proved it, you backed it up, and we believe that, Lord. And we believe that your word has been fulfilled, that we are here this day telling what you have done and will continue to tell as long as we have breath in these bodies. So Lord, this word is going to go out and may it, may it not return void, but may it seek out those who could believe, Lord, that could be part of this body. And we'll thank you for that. We give you praise today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless. Praise the Lord.